My daughter likes to paint, so I figured I'd make her an easel and storage box. The box will be 18 inches by 12, 3 inches high, and made from 5 16th inch stock. I'm not exactly sure what kind of wood this is because I took it from a standing dead tree that had dried nicely but not yet begun to rot. I'll use box joints on the corners. It's a very strong joint, second only to dovetails, but it can be cut easily on a table saw using this simple jig. The dado is milled on both edges of the sides to receive the top and bottom panels. The panels are just eighth inch hardboard. This keeps the weight down and will contrast nicely with the light colored wood grain. The glue up requires some attention to ensure the corners are square because the thin sides flex very easily. I always cut the tails just a little bit long because they're easy to sand flush later. Once the glue is set, top is cut from the box. To strengthen the box and hide the joint between the panels and sides, a trim will be added around the top and the bottom. The bottom trim features an integral foot. Because of the very small size, this turned out to be a very difficult cut to make, so I don't think I'd do it this way again. The top of the box has a sliding T-groove to act as the canvas clamp. The slider is laminated from two pieces and the T-slot rails are made by cutting a dado on the table saw. Make sure the spine of the slider is a bit proud of the rails or the bracket will rub on the rails when it moves. The rails need a notch cut in the ends to clear the trim from the top. When all the pieces are test fit and pre-sanded, they can be glued to the top. Since I don't have any deep reach C-clamps, I use clamping calls to provide pressure at the center of the top. Mortising the hinges is done with a chisel. Most boxes and chests have the hinge on the long side, but this will be an exception so that I can make a larger easel. Slider and rails need brackets to hold the canvas. I thought about a few more complex clamps, but in the end I figured just a simple pair of blocks would do the job just fine. The stationary bracket has exposed screws. Rather than plug the holes, I figured I'd use some fancy pants brass screws instead. The interior of the box needs a liner to align the top and stiffen the sides and some dividers to organize the interior. A green felt liner will really dress up the interior but it needs to be installed before the trim and liner. Spray adhesive holds it in place then the fabric is just trimmed to fit. The interior liner and dividers get a final sanding prior to assembly. I use little copper plated nails as pins to hold the pieces in place. I suppose I could have done this with dados, but this works fine too. The braces that hold up the top need pins to hold them in place. I cut the pins with a hacksaw, then clean up the ends by spinning them against a grinding wheel. To cut them to exact length, I drill a hole half inch deep and then a smaller through hole push the pin out. Pins are then put into the hole and filed flush, then pushed out using the through hole. I can then polish up the pins with emery paper and epoxy them in place. The thumb screw that holds the slide in place needs a block with a countersunk hole to hold a T-nut. After the T-nut is installed, the block is cut to length, beveled, pre-drilled, and then screwed in place. The thumb screw is made from a nut, copper washer, and a bolt sandwich. After I epoxy everything together and tighten it up, I spin it against a grinding wheel until round, and then polish it up with some memory paper.
Case needs draw clasps to hold it closed. I suppose I could order some, but making a pair should be fun. After sketching out some plans, I cut the needed profiles and tuned them up with emery paper. After cutting the pieces to length, the hinge for the latch was cut with a small saw. The latch and hinge were then clamped together and the hinge pin and bail wire holes were drilled. Once drilled, the latch and hinge were rounded over so that they could rotate freely. A sixteenth inch backer was glued to the hinge piece to reinforce the tiny piece and then everything was sanded smooth and flush. The wire bail is made from some heavy gauge copper wire and then finagled into place. Rounding over the corners of the catch made it operate much more smoothly. Mounting holes for the screws were then marked out, drilled, and countersunk. Finally, the finished draw clasps were installed on the box. Lastly, Case needs a carry handle, so I figured I'd try my hand at making one. I looped some leftover paracord a few times, then stitched the strands together to make a flat strap. Some scrap leather made a good wrap, which is then stitched up so that the leather edges are drawn together. handle will then be attached to some brackets using square copper rings. The mounting brackets are simple little blocks drilled for mounting screws and to receive the mounting rings. Once the end of the rings are forced into place, the handle is ready to be installed on the case. This artist's chest is ready to go to work. Making a custom handle and clasps really added to the depth and uniqueness of this project, so I'm looking forward to doing more of that in the future. Thanks for watching.